Okay, so there's a trend going around where they like to attack me, yours truly, and they like to make movies attacking dispensationalism. And they like to say, oh, Gene Kim, you know, he's a heretic. He taught about this. He, he destroyed different gospels. He thinks the pre-tribulation rapture was lost during the Dark Ages, blah, 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 blah. And some of these guys are actually young punks. They only look old because they grow a fake beard around them. They grow a beard so that they can cover their youth. But if you don't just watch their videos, you have to, because as they know as long as they make the video enticing with a lot of graphic arts, they yeah. fool you. Yeah. But if you study those, those groups where they're sent from, and if those pastors who uh, uh, approve them currently, you'll find out they're a weird cultic fringe. Amen. That's what they are. All right. Now these people, they like to give uh, this a lie that I claim no one understood dis dispensationalism and the pre-tribulation rapture until Darby. So that's the idea. So until John Nelson Darby, then, and then because of us, Bible believers coming in, so then until we get Bible believers coming in, and then they'll include my name right here, then, oh, then until then we got all the knowledge of the truth right over here concerning dispensationalism. But before then, it was all lost. That's what they will claim. Now, no, I don't teach this nonsense. What I teach right here is that the Bible taught it a long time ago. And then what happened is that because the Catholic Church came in, it's pretty obvious that the Catholic Church's traditions were more widespread than the truth of the Bible. Why? Because people couldn't even read their Bibles because the Catholic Church locked them up for more than a thousand years, almost. It's almost a thousand years, probably more than that. Now, when you do that, obviously, then you're not going to see the truth. Can truth be hidden? Of course. The, Paul mentioned about the gospel is hid to them that are lost. The Bible talks about Satan blinding the eyes. So I'm not saying that we, we got the full truth and then I'm some Mooney out there that, and I'm some Joseph Smith, oh, I got the whole truth. What a bunch of bunk right there. Number one, number one, you got to realize this. If you look at history behind you, there are many saved Christians before us who laid foundations for dispensationalism. I'm just the lucky guy who got it all together. Amen. And guess what? I'm not the only one. There are many Bible-believing preachers out there, but they're just not famous on YouTube. If you think all the preachers are what you see on YouTube, you're in a virtual fantasy, not That's reality. Right. That's right. I'm actually a small guy, small church. There are plenty of Bible-believing pastors and churches out there. I'm just the guy who saw ahead, since I live in Silicon Valley, about this internet thing. That's why I became big. Okay, anyways, so this has nothing to do with me. This is from the Bible, all of this. Amen. Amen. Now, we're going to cover verses on those things, but here's another thing. Just buy a book called Dispensationalism Before Darby. And that proves there was dispensationalism before Darby. It's called Dispensationalism Before Darby. Just buy the book, and I don't even have to give you all the quotes. If you look at my videos on Dispensationalism playlist, you'll see me cover the history anyway, giving quotations. But that book will do better justice. So I would recommend you to look at that. There, I rest my case. The next one is that dispensationalists, what we believe in is that there were different salvation plans. Because obviously, how can you get saved by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ if Jesus did not die on the cross yet? Amen. How can you believe on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ when he didn't do that yet? So before then, people had to do a, their own way of getting salvation, not the way of Jesus Christ getting saved under him alone by what he did on the cross. They had to do works. That's why it makes so much sense Noah had to build an ark for his salvation. That's why if you look at Hebrews chapter 11, it mentions about, yes, these are heroes of faith in the Old Testament, but you'll notice all sorts of works they had to do. Abraham had to leave his homeland. 
That's a work right there. Why did they have the Old Testament law back then? And they had to abide by that. But after Jesus died on the cross, we don't do that anymore. See, everything makes sense. Now, we teach that this is so basic because one of the basic evidences is Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, what did they have to do to maintain their salvation right here? They could not eat the fruit off the tree, right? If they eat it, then they lose their salvation. Now, obviously, that's different from how we got saved. See, we don't have to avoid a tree. We don't have to be forbidden to eat. But those people did. That's a work right there. That obvious proof that their salvation differed from ours. But then these amateurs, they claim that, well, you know, how can we say that Adam and Eve's salvation was by not eating the fruit of the tree? Because salvation means you have to be saved from sin. So sin did not even exist yet. So salvation was, did not exist yet. That's what they claim. So they claim that salvation did not even start yet because Adam and Eve did not, because Adam and Eve did not eat the fruit where sin started to begin with. That's their argument. But look, they don't know basic English. Just look up Webster's 1828 Dictionary on salvation. And this is the very first definition you'll find. The act of saving, preservation from destruction, danger, or great calamity. And that's a Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Now, according to that, that definition, isn't that correct? They, they are preserved from danger and destruction if they don't eat the fruit off the tree. Yes? Yes. It doesn't have to fit your own term and definition that it only means to be rescued from sin. Now, here's another thing. Just to be more sympathetic to our critics, let's, use, let, let's look up the word saved too. Saved. Were they saved by not eating the fruit off the tree? Webster's 1828 Dictionary, first definition again. To preserve from injury, destruction, or evil of any kind. Look at that. Another definition includes to rescue from danger as to save a house from the flames, to save a man from drowning, to save a family from ruin, to save a state from war. See that? So notice right here that, yes, we agree that salvation means that you have to have a problem sin first. So you have to be saved from that. But it also means preservation from harm. And let's be honest, they, were, they had to be preserved, saved from sin right here. Because this is sin, the tree where they ate it. Okay, so they don't even know basic English. Now, another one. Galatians chapter 1, verse 9. We believe, that's why we teach and believe that the gospel that Paul preached was not available until, what? After Jesus died on the cross. Before then, during the Old Testament, they did not have that. Now, because of that, that's why dispensationalism, watch my video, Four Gospels, okay? Just type down Four Gospels, Gene Kim, and then you'll find me somewhere. But here's the idea. That's why there were different Gospels back then. Now, I'm not going to go through all the basics of dispensationalism because I'm trying to cover my critics here, okay? So I'm just going to do this because of time's sake as well. Now, they accuse us, oh, you dispensationalists preach different Gospels, but look what Paul said in Galatians chapter 1, verse 9. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other Gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. So they all say, let Gene Kim be damned, let him burn in hell. And that's why these guys are really like Muslim terrorists, yeah. because I guess the guy kind of looks like one, you know? <laughs> So then these guys are Muslim terrorists at heart and they just want the people to burn in hell. They want the people to be hurt. They want the people to be injured. So the thing is this, is that these heretics right here, now I'm rightfully calling them out because the Bible says that wrong doctrine must be exposed, Romans 16, and that heretics should be rebuked at 1 Timothy chapter 5. So no, I'm not unloving. Why are you pastors fighting each other? No, you got to realize this. Those guys are a cultic fringe that's not recognized by majority of independent fundamental Baptist churches. The type of church that I came from is not some rebel rogue rows. You got to realize that there's, if you even look at our resources site, and that's not everybody, there are so many of us Bible believing churches who believe in this dispensationalism doctrine. This group that you see on YouTube, see, you're looking at a virtual fantasy again. 
That's like three random Joes out there in some house that can start any kind of random church. And if they start a YouTube ministry, and then you think that when majority of pastors disagree with them, oh, why are they all fighting each other? No, it's because they're a weird little fringe. That's why. Amen. We have to make, make sure you people realize that and say, we avoid these. These are cult pastors. Yeah. Cult pastors. Cult pastors. Amen. Because they can't go against the word of their leader That's right. in this movement. Okay, now here's another thing right here. Galatians chapter 1 verse 9, this is their proof text that we preach a different gospel because we admit that there are four different gospel dispensationalists. So because of that, let us be accursed. Um, okay, they did not, this is so easy to debunk. Look at verse 11 through 12, they forgot that. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is what? Not after man. Not after man. So no man before Paul preached the gospel he preached. Mm -hmm. He did it. Why? Verse 12, for I neither received it of man. Oops. So I guess the Old Testament prophets didn't preach about this gospel. Mm -hmm. Neither was I taught it. Oh, so he, did, he wasn't even taught in this. Uh -oh. But by what? The revelation of Jesus Christ. Oh, so notice right here that the gospel, that the gospel, so let's erase this part now right here briefly. So notice right here that in the gospel right here, during the New Testament, the church age, before then, which is the Old Testament right here, during the Old Testament right here, they did not have this gospel back then. Paul's gospel wasn't available until later. Oopsies. What are you going to do about that? Now, these guys are such dishonest readers. They like to use verse 9 because at least it, they can point out that I'm damned. That's what they like to do. And then they ignore the verses, which are like two verses later. But look, they ignore chapter 2, verse 2 as well. And I went up by revelation. See, remember his revelation about his gospel? And communicated unto them that gospel. The apostles, which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. Why was Paul private about preaching this gospel if the remainder people of the Christian church knew about this gospel? Ooh, so it's a different gospel. Okay, now I rest my case right there. Now let's go to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. These, these guys, man. Why didn't you make a video against these people uh, criticizing you, Pastor? Because this is so easy to debunk, and I don't have time to do that. I have time to spend time with you people growing in grace. Amen. These are just some small cultic fringe. I'm doing this now, though, because I want to make my case right here that anti-dispensationalism, that it is false. Yep. And I'm not like, oh, they have a good argument, so I don't know what to do. <laughs> okay. Let's look at Romans chapter 4, verse 2. You notice I use their same proof text too? Yep. Guess what? I'm going to keep using their, their same proof text quite often. Amen. So I can show you how much amateur they are. Amen. I'm not even looking at the other verses I could have turned to. I'm just going to, uh, I mostly go by their own proof text. Okay, now let's look at Romans chapter 4, verse 2 through 6. Now, I don't have, I got to wrap this up, so let me... So you all read this, okay? Don't just believe what I'm saying online. You all read this, okay? So from verse 2 through 6, they claim that Abraham was saved by faith, not by works, as well as David. Ah, so then there was something before Paul, that means. So they will claim right here that uh, Abraham and David... Now go to Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Abraham and David... They receive this faith, not works. And by the way, if you look at the middle of Romans chapter 4, verses 2 through 6, Paul argues about, so see, we're saved by faith, not by works. No work is necessary. So this seems to prove that Old Testament saints before the church age, before Paul's gospel, got salvation by faith. Now let's look at Acts chapter 10, uh, verse 42 through 43. And then I want you to keep your hand over there, okay? Because we're going to return there. Notice Acts chapter 10, verse 42. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he 
which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead, to him give all the prophets witness that who, through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. So notice right here that all the Old Testament prophets right here, that they also receive this salvation by grace without works. So it's all the other Old Testament prophets. All right, now keep your hand here because I'm going to debunk that easily in the same passage. Now jump to Galatians 3, verse 8. Galatians 3, verse 8. This is not worth my time. All I have to do is just read 10 verses around it, and I'm like, oh my goodness, this is already debunked. Now let's look at Galatians 3, 8. Now I'm going to debunk them in their very own proof text right here. Okay, I'm going to make it even better for you. That's how... That's how they are deliberately blinding themselves. They're deliberately blinding themselves against dispensationalism when it's plain. Galatians 3.8, And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. Ah, so Abraham plainly received this gospel by faith. So, do we say amen to this? Absolutely. Well, then there's a contradiction right here, Pastor. No. Okay, look at 1 Peter 1. Now keep your hand at those two passages, Galatians 3 and Acts 10. And then I'm going to show you something that's going to be very enlightening. It's not hard. Oh, it's so hard. Oh, this is so deep. Dispensationalism, so confusing. I don't get it. No, how many people I got watching online who said dispensationalism made so much sense? You know why they want to say confusing? They want to say confusing because what they don't like is that they don't like these divisions. And because they don't like these divisions, they deliberately put them in a scattered way yes. where people can see and get fooled by graphic arts design. This is very confusing. No, that's not what it is. It's like getting a thousand pieces of a puzzle. Yeah, if you scatter them all around, of course it's confusing. But when you connect the pieces, yeah. then you realize it starts to make sense, the full picture. That's what we, that's what we teach on dispensationalism. Okay, so anyways, let's look at 1 Peter chapter 1. Did they see and taste this salvation by faith? Yes. Look at verse 10, 1 Peter 1.10. Of which salvation the, prophet, the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace. See that? So yeah, they've been searching, they've been talking about it. But here's the thing. Prophesied of the grace that what? Should come unto you. Oh, so then in other words, this was not there that time. This salvation by grace wasn't until us during the church age. Then what's the idea right here? Why, it's very easy. What they got was tidbits of this. They were seeing glimpses of it. But then it wasn't plainly revealed until Jesus died on the cross. When Jesus died on the cross, that's why Paul, Peter, and the apostles are seeing, oh, that's why the Old Testament scriptures talk about this and this and this about Jesus and salvation by grace. So they made it more clear to the people. Now, see, they t took taste, glimpses of it, but they didn't get the fullness of it like we did. Because keep reading, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the thing. See that? It was not for them this salvation. It was for us. So that's why it makes sense Paul and the apostles were using these Old Testament examples as pictures, typologies, what these people saw concerning the salvation by grace. Do you see why this makes sense? Yeah. Now, if you don't believe me, okay, let's go back to their main text and debunk it, okay? Let's debunk it through their main text. Let's go to Acts chapter 10, huh? Let's look at their first text right here. Let's debunk. So remember, they, they used Acts chapter 10 that all oh, the Old Testament saints preached about this salvation by grace, so they were saved by it. Uh, no, 1 Peter chapter 1. Now, I'm going to write that down because some people online are not reading and get fooled by graphic arts design. 1 Peter chapter 1. Remember that. That will answer any Old Testament verse that they're going to pull up 
where it showed that they experienced some salvation by faith, by grace. Now, the easy debunking to that is they got glimpses and they tasted it. They did not get the fullness of it. That is pretty obvious. Do you know what the biggest evidence is? Type down the word faith in your entire Old Testament. Yeah. It only shows up twice. Yeah. It shows it was not that clear. You know faith was very clear to us later on when you type down faith in the New Testament. Yeah. Oh, how many verses you'll find on that now, huh? Now, let's look at Acts chapter 10. Now, they quoted verse 42 through 43, right? Now, so dishonest. Did they read 36 through 37, which was before that? If they read Acts 10 honestly in numerical order, they would have saw that. 36 through 37. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. Yeah, okay, about the salvation. Verse 37, that word I say ye know, which was published throughout all Judea, and began. See, there's a starting point. Not from Abraham. From what? Galilee. Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Oh. Oh. In their main text. Now go to Galatians 3, 8. I'm going to look at their own proof text right here. Now this is so dumb. These guys are deliberately blinding themselves. I think their beards are too long that they can't see what they're reading in the verses. Galatians chapter, why are you criticizing them about their appearance? Because these guys mock other Bible-believing preachers on how they look. They, they call them dykes, queers, yeah. homos, fags. What in the world? What kind of honest spirit is that? That is dishonest wickedness. So I'm going to give them the proper courtesy in return and give them that kind of name for calling. Just be thankful I did not call them a fag and a homo, all right? I'm not that rude. And do you know how many onliners and people, when they look at them, they say, he's a fag, he's a queer? <laughs> okay, now, let's look at the book of Galatians chapter 3, verse 8. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen... No, 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 slow down, you heretic. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify what? The heathen through faith. See, look at this. How can, if you think faith was available long time ago, before the New Testament, why is this foreseen in the future? Why is it that the heathen, the Gentiles, get justified? This is a time period for the church age. Why is this foreseen, predicted ahead of time if they didn't have this to begin with? That doesn't make sense. It makes more sense with 1 Peter 1 that this faith and salvation by grace alone will someday happen after I die on the cross. Why? Because if you argue anything, faith and grace alone, outside of my payment, that is heresy and blasphemy. Amen. Until he can pay it in full, then we can receive this. That's right. Praise God. To teach otherwise is heresy. That's why we believe in dispensational salvations. You're disgracing the cross of Jesus Christ right here. You're saying that we can get saved by faith and grace without the cross then. No, we need it with the cross, friend. Okay, now, let me argue this, okay? So, it makes more sense with 1 Peter 1, God was showing them glimpses of it. He gave them a taste of that salvation as well. But the fullness of it was not until the New Testament right here. Why? Because he needs that full payment to prove it. Okay. So, uh, Galatians 3.8, that debunks that one. And not only that, uh, I'm not going to look at these verses for time's sake, okay? But uh, you can look it up yourself. Abraham and David, they, it is true that they took glimpses of this. We know that for a fact, not the fullness. You might say, why? It's because both of them even realized salvation by works during their time period. David, at Psalms chapter 103, verses 17 through 18. Abraham with James chapter 2, verse 21 through 24. And before these cult pastors said, no, this is not James 2, 21 through 24, is not talking about salvation by faith, but rather to your walk in Jesus Christ. No, the language said faith perfected by works. And that clearly contradicts Galatians chapter 3, where Paul talked about these Galatians trying to perfect their faith by works. 
isn't it blasphemy to say that uh, my faith is not perfect enough, complete enough in Jesus Christ? That needs to be perfected by works. See, that is blasphemy. I believe that I have a faith that is perfect and complete already in Jesus Christ. It does not need to be perfected by works. Now, the thing is this. So that's proof that James chapter 2 is referring to a salvation by faith and works for Abraham. He recognized that, as well as David at Psalms chapter 103. The last thing I want to say is Galatians chapter 3. They ignored verse 23, which says that... Before faith came, we were shut up unto the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. So Galatians 3.21 told you that faith was not available before. By the way, this is the cream of the crop as well. With uh, I, I just don't have time to go through all of them. John chapter 1, verse 16 through 17, it says that law came by Moses in the Old Testament, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And, we, and the fullness of that grace we received and accepted. See, it wasn't available before Jesus died on the cross. If you want to argue that, then go ahead and be my guest that all you have to do is just have faith and believe without the cross of Jesus Christ. No different from all the religions. Just believe. You're fine.